Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE, covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors, Red Hat and Cisco. Well, good morning and welcome live here to the Austin Convention Center. We continue our coverage here on theCUBE of OpenStack Summit 2016. Um, this is all about commitment today because our CUBE team obviously is uh, bringing you the full Austin experience. That is our commitment to you, our viewer. And that's beyond OpenStack Summit. No keynotes today, so we thought, why not? Let's get out and experience the culinary expertise of this fine city. The social scene, uh, the strata that we have invaded is almost beyond description. Stu Minimum is here to help me do that, Brian Gracely, and our barbecuber, Sam Kahane. I'll explain that in a little bit. Stu, I want to start with you. Just set the table, if you will, for our discussion here about the delights we've had, the barbecue, the tacos, maybe a beverage or two, and the great live music. Yeah, John, so, I mean, first of all, right, Austin's, I mean, great city. You've got Sixth Street, you know, live music's lots of places, uh, and a lot of different foods. Of course, uh, you know, the brisket is the big thing, but tacos, uh, I think this is like my eighth or ninth time here in Austin, but luckily, we brought in a barbecue expert who did some research, um, and uh, I've had the best culinary experience in this visit, uh, you know, probably then, you know, the rest of mine combined uh, attending this, uh, this week. Yeah, I know, they, you know, keep Austin weird. I said, let's keep Austin's recipes here is what I want to do because whatever they're cooking in the kitchen, it's a winner. Uh, Brian, you know all about this, right? Yeah. Uh, Brian, may, maybe people uh, don't realize, uh, Oink Barbecue is a, a thriving business in Eastern North Carolina of which you are a principal member and participant. Yeah. An extensive barbecue menu and most impressively sides for only a buck. That's right. I think that really is, is the headline here. But let's talk about the Austin barbecue you've had. Uh, I'm maybe perhaps inferior to your product in Carolina, but try yeah. to give me an objective uh, criteria measurement here. Well, the, the, the great thing about Austin barbecue, I mean, Austin barbecue is Central Texas barbecue. And if you, if you talk to anybody in the barbecue space, Texas, like everything in Texas is huge, right? So what's Eastern Texas, what's Central Texas? Uh, Central Texas always considered kind of the best of Texas. Um, but it's it's uh, it's handcrafted. I mean, there's a, you, you like you sort of taste the love. It's uh, you know <laughs> you see these guys who are uh, getting up at at three in the morning to put on thousands of pounds of brisket. Uh, they're there all night. They're stoking the fires. Um, it's a long, tedious process, and you know people people stand in line for it. I mean, it's you know there's there's sort of this just experience of of the whole thing. It's not fast food, it's not restaurant food, it's an experience. It's an experience of you know, them putting the effort into making it and you sort of standing in line, having that anticipation built up and then you know, just you sit there with your friends and just go mmm for, for 10 or 15 minutes. It's just, it's an amazing experience. Well you talk about standing in line and that's a great segue to, to Sam here. Sam, uh, for those of you probably not aware, Sam does a lot of work behind the scenes that make theCUBE happen um, in, in a number of respects. Yesterday though, Sam, Perhaps the most important job you've had in quite some time. <laughs> Sam was our line stander at Franklin's Barbecue, rated by Bon Appetit Magazine, Travel Magazine, as the number one barbecue in all of the United States. And you are our man, Sam, to stand in line, dutifully, waiting for our order to fill our lunch appetite. And how long did it take, and what was it like to be amongst the masses at Franklin's? It was quite an honor and a dream come true for me. <laughs> I've been wanting to go to Franklin's Barbecue since the first barbecue I ever had, Blue Ribbon Barbecue in Newton, Massachusetts, and it did not disappoint. I'll tell you a little bit about the process. So we did a lot of research, went on Yelp, talked amongst the team, talked to people who've been to Franklin before, and you have to get there hours before it opens. So it opens at 11 o'clock to even get you know, any barbecue. The barbecue goes quick. The place is open from 11 a.m. Until, until they sell out. So it could be 2 p.m., could be 3, so you got to get there early. So I woke up at 7 o'clock, immediately went to the steam room. I, frankly, I'm surprised you could sleep the night before. It was knowing tough. Knowing what was ahead of you. It was tough. I mean, it, the sense, I was imagining smelling it and sure. it's getting overwhelmed. So I went to the steam room first thing, sweated out all the food from the night before, prepared myself mentally and physically. Then I ran on over there to get there in line. And by the time I arrived, I arrived at uh, 7.50 in the morning. There were already 25 people there in chairs. 
uh, sitting and waiting. People were drinking beers. It was a tailgate experience. Uh, immediately they welcomed me in. I made some great friends. Uh, we took a lot of Twitter uh, pictures together, put them on Twitter, Facebook. And four hours later or so, three hours later, the line started moving. And I was the last one in the door, so the first 25 people make it inside the door. And if, you make, if you're there after 8.30 or 9, the line's all the way around the block. So you got to get there early, and it was so, so, so worth how it. many people do you think were in line when they opened the door? You said open the door at 11. Do you have any idea how many people were behind you in line? It, I mean, it was beyond my eyesight of vision. There must have been 100, 150 people in line. And it, this is on a Tuesday. Imagine on a Saturday or a Sunday. Woo. Did, you, did you take a chair? I did take a chair. So they yeah. have chairs available. All right. So the CVS is pretty much in business next door because of Franklin <laughs> Barbecue. You walk in <laughs> and it's just chairs all over. Everyone's buying chairs. Chairs, they, coolers, umbrellas. They got it all, right? Exactly. And sunscreen. And sunscreen. If, if you don't make it in the first 50, you're out in the sun, and that's, that's where trouble is. And what was our order? Now, I think Stu, actually, I think Stu, I think you, I'll give you credit. You put together a fantastic order. Um, so why don't you go ahead and fill in the blanks here. Just what did we send Sam to pick up well, for us? Well, first of all, um, I'm sure Brian can explain to us why, but it, it's the brisket. So that was the thing. I th we got five pounds of brisket to start with. Uh, with uh, they had the pork ribs, uh, which are also excellent down here. We've had the chance to sample a couple of them. Uh, unfortunately, the beef ribs are only available on the weekend because uh, I haven't had a chance to sample them on, the, on this trip. Uh, we got some of the sides and everything, but I mean, it's all about the meat. A uh, little bit of barbecue sauce if you want there, but you know, you know, Brian says you don't need to to do it. The rub is enough uh, on it, so uh, you know that that's where it is. We had you know big box, um, you know, for our team to have, and some of our key guests and you know friends in the community here got a little bit of extra. We didn't want to promote it too much because we were afraid we'd have a riot of people. Couldn't afford the mass rush. No, yeah. it just would, it, it would have been ugly. Yeah. It was ugly anyway. Absolutely. Well, and, and tell them tell them how big an order like big box you think like oh okay it fits like. How big was the order? It was I huge. Mean, how many pounds of food did we get total? We had 12 to 13 pounds of meat, and it was incredible. Yeah. My big suggestion is the moist brisket. That is the fattier brisket, and it was the most delicious thing I've ever tasted. It melted in your mouth. It was the winner. It topped any barbecue I've ever had before. Made the weight worth it. And, and Brian, what is it about the brisket? Stu said that, that you know, you, that's king. Uh, what is it about that that you think really sets it above you know, the chicken or the pulled pork? It's, it's, uh, the, the crazy thing about it is, is brisket is about the worst piece of meat that you can find on a cow. It's, it's tough, it's, it's uneven in size. It's, and so I think what it is is it's such a uh, difficult thing to cook. You know? So to put it in perspective, Think about having a piece of meat that on one end is that fat and on the other end is this fat and you're trying to figure out how do I keep heat from making you know, it uneven? Um, how do I keep it from burning? How do I, so anybody who can make it uh, you know, tender, uh, keep it moist, um, cook it evenly, it, it's, it's really almost, you know, it's, you're, you're experiencing the taste as much as you're experiencing somebody who has this unbelievable amount of skill to figure out how to do that. And, and that's what, you know, that's, that's sort of the Texas thing. You know, they're, they're proud of the idea that they can, they can pull off this really difficult piece of meat. Um, and again, it's, you know, how do you, how do, you do that well? It's, a, it's an art form. It really is a science and, and an art. Well, again, a, remi a reminder, we are covering the OpenStack Summit 2016. <laughs> on well, the put it in perspective. But, you but OpenStack's about builders, about yes, people who make things, Community. about people who are you know, in their you know, hands-on. That's what barbecue is as well. And, and we're, in fact, we're open source with our advice here, is That's what right. we're doing, because right. we're, we're offering you know, up to the public or private cloud. We don't care. We're, we're non-discriminatory here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, John, if, if, if you want to bring it home to some of the OpenStack uh, activity here, there was the stack party last party. night yep. Yep. Uh, that we went to, and what was really nice about this, I, I don't know, it was about a dozen bars, live music in all of them, you know, plenty of beer, drinks, and all of them, and there was local food. Sam tells me there was 17. I think he, he went in each one of them. Yeah, I I, I, maybe <laughs> Sam might have hit a few more than I did, but uh, um, and there was food at a lot of them. So you know, the tacos. We haven't talked about the tacos yet. Uh, you know, the the barbecue food. Uh, you know, lots of things, sausages uh, there. Uh, really, you know, good event. Uh, you know, one of the challenges, of course, 7,500 people here at the show. There was a limit as how many could, could fit in. They'd capped it. If you hadn't registered about two weeks ago, you, you probably wouldn't have got in. 
side. Um, but that also made it, it wasn't you know, super packed there. Um, but there, there's a few places that you can have kind of this combination. I mean, I don't know any place that has you know, the music, the, few, the food, uh, and, and that atmosphere. Uh, you know, San Jose has a great group of bars that I've been to at some mm -hmm. conferences. Vegas, of course, you've got no shortage of places where you can eat and drink. Um, but you know, Austin you know, really showed the local flavor, uh, which was nice to get uh, here at the event. Yeah, I'm going to give the foundation a lot of credit because they put together a great social event that really, there was professional development there, believe it or not. We heard a lot of conversations going on. People are having a lot of fun. Uh, but it, it did create, um, I think, just a really nice vibe to what, for many people, is the last night of their show. You know, they're here for a couple of days. Uh, maybe they don't wait for days uh, three or four. But, uh, but they closed down the entire Rainy Street, which yep. is a very social area here in Austin. There were several bars, probably 16, 17 or so. Each one was sponsored. So you had the Ubuntu uh, bar, you had the Red Hat, you had the Cisco, you had the OpenStack uh, Foundation bar. And uh, again, a lot of fun, and, uh, and Brian, a lot of uh, uh, good times out there last night. We ran into you and Stu. Yep, yep. Uh, you managed to work one side of the street. We were perhaps on, you know, working uh, hard on the <laughs> other end, uh, but yet you managed to, to make the rounds, I assume. Yeah. So, I, you know, Austin is sort of one of the perfect towns for a, for a big community. I mean, it's, it is a, a people-centric town, right? Everywhere you go, uh, you're going to interact with people just based on kind of the, the pace at which they do things, right? Whether you're waiting in line for food, you're, you're trying to get closer to a live band, like it's a very people-centric thing, which is exactly what these community events are. They're, you know, they're people-centric, they're open so that you're interacting with people. You know, there's certain towns that, that are sort of great alignments for that. Portland's one of those, Nashville's one of those, Austin's one of those, where you, know, you combine great food, you combined outdoor spaces. Uh, so, you know, it, it's sort of a perfect marriage of, you know, what this community is trying to do and just what the city has to offer. It's, a, it's, it's really an awesome combination. Yeah, I said kudos, certainly to them. You mentioned tacos. I mean, we got to hit, was it with torchies? I didn't have the tacos. I missed that on those. So I'm really, a, I, I'm an observer right now. So Sam, were you in on the taco thing? I was definitely in on the taco thing. And like the barbecue, a lot of preparation went into the tacos. This was not my first trip to Austin. I've been it's to not your first rodeo, is what you're not saying. Not my first rodeo, and I've been waiting out. I've always heard about Torchy's Tacos, and you know I've been to all the other taco places because that's a little mainstream. So I try to find the underdogs, but this time we went to Torchy's, and there is a reason it's rated number one. I mean, it was truly tremendous. Stu, what did you think about Torchy's? Yeah. So first of all, I think there's five or six locations of Torchy's, uh, and. Uh, it's been explained to me, it's Austin tacos. It's not, you know, Mexican tacos. So, you know, lots of different options. Uh, Greg Stewart actually did a good job scoping out the menu for us um, and, and helped. I had, you know, a fried avocado it's a team taco. Efforts, uh, I had a chopped, you know, brisket one. Uh, you know, they've got, you know, sauces and, you know, fresh cilantro. Uh, but I, I tell you, the thing that like blew me away was uh, their queso that they had uh, was phenomenal. I mean, just like the perfect balance of, uh, you know, just a little bit of spice in it, the nice cheese, really good chips, like, and even like the right amount, we were like, we finished the chips and like there was just the right amount of cheese. It's like, that never happens. Um, and it, it's funny, people that, you know, we, we talked to some international people and they're like, what is this queso thing? You know, I don't <laughs> understand it. Only in America would you have, you know, a big bowl of cheese that we just kind of uh, scoop up and eat. It's but, uh, Stu's <laughs> not overhyping that at all. And the big thing he forgot in the middle of the queso is guacamole in the queso dip. I've never seen that before. Yeah. It's a first. It's yeah, I saw, I saw a great sign outside one of the restaurants that says, you can't please everybody, dot, 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 you're not queso. <laughs> <laughs> and the music. You know, we haven't really touched on the music here either because you walk outside and we're right downtown. Um, uh, the two big anchor hotels, there's a Marriott on one side, there's a Hilton on the other, but <laughs> you come out of either one and you, you, you hear you know, music on either side, and that's really what Austin's all about too. I think the live music down here is that we heard a lot of it, a lot of great tunes last night, a lot of different bands, a lot of country obviously uh, down here, but a lot of other sounds as well to kind of give it a real nice vibes too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they had uh, the foundation brought in a nice local band uh, to do the keynote, uh, do plenty of cover songs, do soul uh, track, their own. Uh, soul yeah, track, yeah. 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 something like that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so many last night, uh, you know, yeah, some country, a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll in uh, some of these places. Uh, and, you know, definitely a, a fun vibe. And the weather held out, which was really nice. They'd actually, you know, bought, you know, God, I think thousands of umbrellas just in case, um, because, you know, some of Texas have been having some pretty severe weather and it was, 
getting close to here. But uh, you know, all worked out, and uh, yeah, it's been you know really enjoyable location for the event. Uh, I sure hope my uh, backyard of Boston, uh, you know, will have uh, you know tough shoes to fill, and hope hope it'll do well next year when uh, the summit's there. Yeah, yeah, a tough act to follow in a lot of ways. I think you know Austin, as you said. Brian is uniquely situated um, yep. to, to host an event of this type, you know, with the crowd and really the philosophy and the mindset that they have coming into their work, it, takes to the, it goes to their play too, I think. All right, let's go around the table before we wrap up. Uh, Sam, I'm going to start with you. Just uh, some brief uh, overview from your perspective of the, the Austin experience when it comes to you know, the show being here and with the fun that we've had and with the entertainment value. Austin is very unique. You know, they always say Austin, keep, keep Austin weird is the big saying. And truly, you walk through the different burbs and the different areas of the city and it's, it's incredible. You walk into southern Austin and it's like you're stuck in the 70s. All the bars are, you know, converted houses or old garages and it's all very vintage and it's such an interesting, interesting feel. And the food, the barbecue, it makes for a big winner. Uh, I might move down here one day. I love it here, so. And you got a hat. Austin. And I got a hat from Franklin Barbecue. Brian Grayson and myself got these. I'm going to actually toss it on here, if you don't mind. No, that's fine, please. Yeah. <sighs> it's a good fit. Well, if, <laughs> if I had fit. a 10-gallon hat, I'd tip it to you right now. The line Appreciate waiting that. was outstanding. And, Thank um, you. Yeah, you wear it well. All right, Brian? Um, so it's, it's, it's been a great week, um, you know, in, in uh, in sort of reverence for the locals, I'm not going to talk it up too much. They don't want too many outsiders coming in, Sam. They don't want you and your Yankee sort of ways coming down here, <laughs> making it unweird. Uh, but it's a great, it's a great town. It's, everything's walkable. You've got the university close by. The food's great. Um, you know, it's a good. I don't want to say it's a good southern town. It's a good Texas town. Texas is its own country. Um, Austin's its own, you know, it's its own universe. Uh, no, it's fantastic. It's great music, great food, uh, smart technologies around here. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's good. It's a lot of fun. It's been a great week. That's great. And Stu? Yeah, uh, I mean, Brian mentioned a bunch of things. You know, walkability. Uh, one local site that actually uh, Sam and I saw the first night we were here, we went and saw the bats. So Congress Street, Pri uh, Congress Street Bridge, uh, there's, you know, a million and a half bats that live underneath it. Uh, if you get there after dusk, you know, they just like all flock out. Uh, it's a pretty amazing site. I'd seen it one once before, um, you know, did lots of walking, but unfortunately with the amount of food, I don't think uh, that, that it, the balance was in my favor. Uh, that being said, you know, uh, I definitely, you know, didn't need three square meals a day. Like, usually it was like one big meal a day, and uh, you kind of nibble on stuff uh, throughout the day. But, uh, you know, Austin's always fun, um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's it, always a great vibe. Very different from, uh, you know, the rest of Texas and just, you know, uh, cool culture down here. Yeah, Always you mentioned fun. the bats. I'd kind of forgotten about that. I saw them many years ago and somebody at home might be watching this at their office and saying, bats, that's cool? Trust me. You know, Stu nailed it. It is cool. It, it is an awesome site. So anyway, all right, believe it or not, we are going to talk a little bit more about OpenStack uh, throughout the day here. Uh, but we thought we'd just kind of set the flavor of, of what Austin's all about and have a little fun with you here and talk about the barbecue and the beer. And uh, we'll talk about containers later and not the kind that hold barbecue, but the kind of hold great applications. All right, that's it from now. Uh, we'll be back with more here on theCUBE from Austin, Texas. See y'all then.